chance with Macy's, and Macy's at the Mall at Millennia. Again, we'd like to welcome you, and thank you for coming out uh, to see a great show this afternoon. Um, it, uh, we've had a lot of special guests at, over the last nine years at Macy's, and, and uh, no more exciting than the guest that we've got today, who is a James Beard award-winning chef, a uh, great uh, author in uh, multiple cookbooks, New York Times bestseller, and three restaurants uh, in the Chicago area, Fontana Grill, I had to write this one down, Topolo Bampo and uh, Shoko restaurants. So again, on behalf of all of us here, let's give uh, Rick a great welcome. Welcome Rick Bayless. Well, thank you all so much. Thanks for turning out in great numbers here. I'm very excited to be able to share some of my, my love of what I do with all of you this afternoon. Um, you know, there's always supposed to be that kind of sense, that sense of magical quality that I just waltz out here. Well, I couldn't get here until right before this thing happened, so you saw all of the messy, dirty, <laughs> behind the scenes, throwing everything, where's this, where's that, and now, <laughs> See how beautiful this is. So I have a new, I have a new book out, and these are recipes from the new book. The, and it took me a really long time to decide to write this book because people for years have asked me for recipes for their Cinco de Mayo party. Okay, so if it wasn't the Cinco de Mayo party, then it was the tamale party for Christmas time, or don't we have something for Mexican Independence Day? And I was like really resistant to it because I don't like theme books like that because they usually indicate that people have, you know, taken the book off the shelf, put their sombrero on, tacked a serape on the wall and says, we're doing the Mexican theme party tonight. And what that really means is that they've plugged the blender in and they're ready for making a lot of margaritas. You all know this, okay? So it was when I, I, I spent six years writing my first book and I came back and I just had like regional Mexican cooking exuding out of my pores and I, did this book and I got it out there and I was so incredibly proud. It was like, you know, having a, a firstborn and people would say, oh, I love your book. I love your book. Well, finally I got the courage up to say, what are you making out of my book? And um, I just had these visions that they were tackling that classic mole poblano and that, you know, they were, they were planning for a week ahead. They got all the ingredients together. They did all of the preparations, you know, meticulously and then they served it and all that. And 99.9% .9 of them said, I love the guacamole recipe. <laughs> <laughs> so, talk about bursting of guy's bubble. It was like from mole to guacamole. It's like those are about as far extremes as you could possibly get. So I was really resistant to doing this, this sort of theme party book. But something inside of me is all about having a party. It's all about sharing food with my family, my friends. And I am a guy that is known to throw lots of parties, throw big parties. I love entertaining. But I don't do it in a sort of theme way. I do them in something that is, I think it's more organic out of my experiences in Mexico. So the one thing that you have to understand is that I got completely enthralled by Mexico because of its culture. Not because I wanted to learn how to make a certain dish or another dish, but mostly because I was so incredibly in love with this exuberant culture that I was introduced to when I was 14 years old. And the, the, the story is sort of like this. I, I was a real precocious kid and I finally convinced my parents that I, at 14, could plan a whole family vacation. Now, we were a middle-class family of restaurant people, and we had never been on an airplane before for a vacation, and we had never gone to another country. 
and I was only 14 years old, and the proud graduate of eighth grade Spanish class. And I had decided that with eighth grade Spanish, I could talk to anybody in Mexico, you know? So I convinced my parents that this was a smart thing to do. How in the world, I don't know. But I made the plane reservations, made the hotel reservations, planned that day by day what we were going to do, where we were going to go through my guidebook. So my mother's really worried because the plane doesn't arrive until like nine o'clock at night. And I, I grew up in Oklahoma City. At nine o'clock at night, they start to roll up all the sidewalks. Everything shuts down. There's certainly nothing out there that is, would, would make you feel comfortable. So my mother thinks we're going to get to Mexico City and there's not going to be any taxis at the airport. She thinks the whole place is going to be completely shut down. Well, I don't know if you know much about Mexican culture, but that's about the time you start thinking where you're going to go out to eat that night, you know? So we get to Mexico City. Of course, there's taxis. We get in the taxi. We go to the classic, beautiful, old Del Prado Hotel on the Alameda Park. Even at 14, I had very good taste. And I, I booked us into this really nice hotel. And it was overlooking this park. We got to our room, I opened up the windows, and I was totally smitten. Because what I saw in this park was a completely different side of life than I had ever known. It was exuberance, there were people wandering in the park, they were eating street food, the ladies were down there roasting nuts over a little mesquite fire. They, they, um, let me just check. I, I, I'm sorry. It doesn't. It doesn't go down. That's all it does. <laughs> the um, the people were just having such a great time. There were balloon vendors. There were mariachi strolling around, and basically, what I found was a culture that I felt so incredibly happy to be in, and it felt actually not foreign, but completely, completely at home for me. And it was that sense of generosity of spirit that I found for many, many, many years living in Mexico that kept me going back and kept me going back. And it was that that I brought back to the United States and I decided I wanted to put into a restaurant. You know, I'm a fourth generation in a family of restaurant people. I tried to get away from it for a while, only to know that it was really coursing through my, my veins. And so when I came back from Mexico, I wanted to put something in our place that would represent or would reflect that beautiful generosity of spirit. That thing that I call the fiesta spirit, but we understand Understand that sort of in the wrong way in this in our country I think a lot of times you know <clears throat> Mexico uses all these different occasions as a reason to celebrate the bringing together of people and it could be a Sunday afternoon that's all it has to be it's like the week is done everybody's together we're gonna have a special meal just because it's Sunday we're gonna bring the whole family together just because it's Sunday. And I'd kind of grown up in a family that had done that. We were catering family. I had a grandmother that was totally in love with the idea of bringing the family together as many times as possible and serving food. I always say that I have no idea whether she was a good cook or not because <laughs> when you sat around my grandmother's table, you would start to put that bite of food in your mouth, that first bite of food. And she would just go, oh my God, isn't this the best thing you've ever eaten in your entire life? Well, she's your grandmother, so what are you gonna say? No, I think it needs a little more salt, or maybe you didn't cook it long enough, or what? No, you go, it is, it's the best thing in the whole wide world. So that's why I said, I, I know, don't have a clue as to whether or not she was a, a really good cook, but there was a sense that she was just infusing our times together as a family with something that just made us all happy. And it made us happy to be together. And I found that over and over and over in Mexico. So when I decided I wanted to share some of my love for bringing people together, family and friends, uh, around food, of course I went back to my roots in Mexican cooking and I thought, what do I like, what do I do when people come to my house? And that's what I've packed into this book. And that's why I called it not Mexican Fiesta or whatever, but Fiesta at Rick's, because this is actually the way that I put together parties at my house. So 
Because so many people tell me, and still tell me, that their favorite recipe, the only one they make in our books, are guacamole, um, of course we start with guacamole in this book, and of course we start with margaritas, but hopefully we're going to sort of give you a new perspective on guacamole and margaritas. Guacamole, I think, is not a recipe, and so many people are always looking for that perfect guacamole recipe, and I say... You know, guacamole really wants to change, it wants to evolve, depending on what the seasons are, how you're going to use it, and all that sort of thing. So, in, in our restaurant, Topolo Bampo, we have a different change in guacamole every month. And it, it really reflects the seasons and what the rest of the menu is. So I've taken some of those ideas and put them into this book. So there's like eight different guacamole recipes that range from everything from a, like a, a, a sort of classic one that puts sun-dried tomatoes instead of regular tomatoes in it, to one that has fruit in it, like mango and avocado are just like a match made in heaven, but if you never think along those lines, you might miss something that's really wonderful. So we have a whole variety of those and, and, and great drinks. We're going to get to those things in a couple seconds here. And then I love to share when people are coming over, something special. Something that you wouldn't have just on a regular basis. That's what makes it a party. So for me, it, it's, a lot about, it's a lot about good ingredients like seafood that you might not, you might have to take the little extra little bit to get. It, usually seafood's a little more expensive, but also if you're gonna make ceviche, it has to be super fresh. So there's a whole section of this book that's devoted to seafood cocktails and ceviches and things that um, you might want to share with your friends. Then of course everybody always likes all the stuff from the street vendors and the, the little Mexican diner kind of places, so there's inspirations from those kinds of places. And to tell you the truth, the, the food from those places is I understand it's sort of almost like a Mexican tapas because you can put a whole bunch of stuff out and people can help themselves to it, just like if you were making Spanish food. And I think that's a, a really fun thing for a casual party to share. And then sort of the culmination of this book is a, so much about live fire cooking because to me, when I invite people over, the first thing I think about is firing up the grill. Now, I would sort of... I said the grill, but I happen to be one of those total live fire cooking geeks, so I have lots of grills. We actually had to build a little shed on the back of the house just to house the grills, because I have never met a grill I didn't like. And so we have, we have lots of grills, and I'm constantly looking at new ones, um, much to my wife's chagrin. You know, that's why she put it on the back of the house, so she didn't have to look at it. But, um, I love to invite people over and we kind of hang around the grill, cook the food. There's something about seeing the food all come together, see it, see it cooked that I think is really very festive. So I, 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 for my sort of main course kind of chapter, if you will, for this book, I really focused a lot on, the, um, on that part of it. So with all of that said, I've given you kind of a little map of what this book is like. and. I'm gonna just jump into making guacamole and we're gonna talk about sort of how we build flavor in guacamole because I'd like for you to leave not with just a recipe in your head for this, but with the idea of how to make up your own guacamole.